Welcome to episode 27 of You Times Two, where we're on an adventure of getting to know the two of us that are living this human experience, this little character, this human character that we're playing here, and the real us, that powerful, supernatural, eternal spirit being made of unconditional love. That's the actor behind this character. Hey everybody, it is your Breda Zen and I'm a wake-up artist. My passion is helping us remember who we really are and the connection that we can have and do have with the creator and the spirit world. In the last episodes, we've been covering heartbreak just to be able to understand how that pain and those experiences influence our journey here and also impacts our relation to our higher selves. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the five things I learned from my five exes. And don't worry, it's going to be a smooth ride on this drama train. It's not going to be bitter or sour. I know it almost sounds like a Christmas carol where I was visited by the ghosts of Christmas, past, present, and future. But where in the last episode, I talked about what I learned emotionally uh, through those experiences. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the more the wisdom behind what I learned after I was able to look back truthfully and not through the eyes of that pain and that heartbreak. I think our first serious relationships we go to are probably one of the most educational and eye-opening outside of our relationship with like our families because we are faced with this outside uh, influence or this outside experiences where they weren't raised within you know our family influences normally so it's the first time where we are kind of pushed into this experience realizing that not everyone thinks the same way that you do <laughs> and that's where the little battling begins uh, a friend of mine she actually uh, was getting into a new relationship he actually ended up marrying him eventually uh, but when they were going through their relationship in the beginning they were living together and they actually uh, were like having these disagreements where it was frustrating for her. So she was talking to me about it and the example she gave me, they were making like brownies or cake, something that you were baking and you had like different mixes and different uh, things like that. And she was like, Oh my God, he doesn't do it the way you're supposed to do. You know, you know, you're supposed to add like the eggs to this first and then add the milk. And then this, she had this whole way that she would do that. And, but he had evidently grown up thinking differently uh, within his family. So once I convinced her that maybe, just maybe there isn't a brownie police or government required way to combine all those, that maybe she could take a step back and see if there's something that she could learn about how he's doing it. Might learn, you know, a different way of doing it that actually works out better. And you know, approach it possibly in a way like, that's interesting how you're doing that. Um, why do you do it that way? Instead of like, why are you doing it that way? You know, approach it in an inquisitive type of way instead of a judgmental way. And she said, okay, I want to give it a try. And so uh, it was like a week or so later, she came back to report to me that she was like, oh my God. She goes, we had a situation like that where we were cooking something in the kitchen and I just asked him, that's interesting. Why do you do it that way? And he looked at her, she said, with this like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And then they both busted up laughing. And she goes, you've been talking to Denny, haven't you? Because he kind of knew me. So he was like, that sounds like something he would say. And even to this day, uh, you know, when I... Uh, talk to her should be like oh my god we still use that approach and we laugh because it's just become this little little joke between them but it, it makes them laugh and it takes them out of that you know tense situation to do something else so i thought it was interesting because that was so popped into my head when i was talking about the clashes that we can have and how we don't look at things the same way but we'll get back to my first relationship so he actually had just gotten out of the military and we 
were actually living together as well. And I was raised very differently. I mean, he had just gotten out of the military and he was more of a play, play, play. And if there's time left over, do the work. And I was very much the work, 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 chores, chores, chores. And if there's time left over, then we go have fun. And so after this, you know, back and forth, back and forth, eventually he grew tired of my authoritarian regime of we got to do this stuff. And he just told me, just, you know, came out and blurted out that he had been in the military. He had to clean, you know, toilets and they had him, you know, in the military, them doing all sorts of chores and they had all this stuff they were constantly doing and helping clean and doing all that and he goes i'm just tired of that i'm ready to have some fun and he really made me think he goes you like it this way but i don't care if it's you know immaculately clean as long as there's stuff not growing i'm good and and i was kind of raised totally the opposite where there was this high bar of how things were supposed to look and how to be so it really dawned on me and I'm like, wow, yeah. I mean, why am I forcing my way of doing things on you? And I hadn't even dawned on me that someone else would want to do things in a different way. So I stopped pressuring him and then I, you know, would just try to do everything myself. And it did make me question of going, do I really, does that really matter? What am I afraid of? Who am I afraid is going to come and judge me for things not being a certain way. And so I started to look at why I believed things should be a certain way. And then he wanted to go to a movie one day and he was like, you know, Hey, let's go to a movie. And I'm like, well, I want to get laundry done. And the vacuuming hasn't been done in, you know, several weeks. And it's like just gross in my mind. Right. And so there was a certain amount of things I wanted to do. And he was like, okay, I tell you what, he, offered on what he was willing to do on my little uh, urgent list of things that had to get done before I had fun. And he helped like he would go, I'll, I'll vacuum. You can do that and that. And then we can go to a movie at this time. And I'm like, sounds good. And after we get back, then I'll finish up those other things. So it was a wonderful learning experience where I learned to go from this to the middle, but he also amazingly went from this a little more to their mental too. So there's this wonderful cohesiveness that we could learn from one another as we question those have tos and shoulds and need tos of our relationships and what we think needs to be done in life. Boyfriend number two came very quickly after the other one. I had realized I would become a serial monogamist, which means you jump from relationship to relationship to relationship. And it's like eating Pringles. Like I waited until I was 29 to have my first relationship. And it was like, you know, eating Pringles that you eat one and then you just can't stop eating it once you started. <laughs> so, uh, he actually, after I'd only had known him for like six months and he actually had two children and his wife had moved out of state and he invited me to go along with them to go visit, um, you know, out of state. And so I went with them and, you know, basically stayed at the hotel when he went to go visit uh, his children and all that. But he really shared how it was just so painful for him to be so far away from his children. And that's when he broke the news to me that he was looking at moving there. And he asked me if I would be willing to move with him. So after only knowing him six months, I was like, all right, let's do it. And I always recommend if you want to learn your life lessons at a ludicrous speed, move out of state for love at least once because you learn so much. I did learn one that I was very good with children um, because his, uh, he had two, one was really, really young that um, he didn't really take with him anywhere. But uh, the, uh, he had like a three-year-old two two to three-year-old that um, he would have every other weekend. So I got to, you know, experience uh, interacting with a toddler, had a really cute little relationship with them. And, um, you know, was more of a friend than, you know, kind of a, another parent or whatever. And it also, during it all, I learned 
that how easily I was giving up myself because I left my job. I left all my friends. I left, you know, all my life, even possessions behind and went very minimal to move. And it was then, you know, that I realized, wow, I really don't think very highly of myself. And there was other situations that appeared during that relationship too, which I'll kind of talk about in the next episode. But we, um, I ended up moving back. And when I moved back, it was very empowering for me because it was then that I chose my life. And I made a promise to myself that I would always honor my dreams and honor, you know, my life at least equal to my partners instead of always putting them way far above my own. With the first two boyfriends, I had moved in with them fast because, you know, later I realized that I did not trust men. And so I needed to get close to them and have them in my presence so I could keep an eye on them because I didn't trust them at all. <laughs> but number three put a halt to that because he was like, no, he had just gotten out of a long-term relationship and was like, no, 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 we do not. Uh, I do not want to move in with right away. I want to take time to date and get to know someone. And I don't want to rush into anything again. So he really, you know, put a stop to that moving in quickly piece, which did stretch my trust uh, issues and I very much expressed mistrust to him, which I'll talk about in just a sec. But he really, you know, showed me uh, and broke me of some things. I mentioned in the last episode how his harsh speech hurt my widow feelings. And, but in hindsight, of course, when I looked later, I go, he was the perfect teacher for me and brought so much awareness around how I had this manipulative way of trying to get things to go my way and to feel safe. And so I learned about this manipulation thing. And he would he would basically, you know, if you ever like walk out, I would walk out of a room if we got upset because I wanted him to chase after me. And I even like walked out the front door once and was walking around the, uh, you know, the uh, block. And after the first round through, I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. He didn't come after me and asked me to come back in. So here I am walking around the block. I'm going to have to go back in eventually. So let me just go in now instead of taking another lap around the block. And I walked in and he, of course, laughed at me and was just like, oh my God, you know, you're just, you know, ridiculous, you know. And he would, when I would pout, whatever, he would be like, Oh, what's the matter? You're going to ride that lip to town? And he'd go like, you're going to cry me a handful? <laughs> you know, he would do things like that when I was going into that manipulation stuff. And finally, he had just had it and said, I'm not going to fall for all this manipulation stuff. He said, if you want to talk, you talk. If you want to walk, you walk, you know. And I was like, wow. Um, and I learned, you know, through that situation. He actually, even with all the mistrust, because, you know, I'm like, who was over here? Why are there two glasses in the sink? Why is there two towels up in the bathroom? What was going on when I wasn't over here? You know, because we weren't living together yet, right? And so he basically told me, if you don't go get counseling for your mistrust, we're not going to last very long. And so out of the fear of losing him, I it made me brave enough to go to counseling. And I learned so much through those sessions, but through his experience with him, I did learn about the three stages of manipulation. You know, the first one is normally we act hurt. We act, you know, sad and disappointed. And I can't believe that, that you did that. And why would you treat me that way? Trying to get them to bend to our will because we have this belief that other people that their emotions and happiness are our responsibility. So if I act sad, then it's your responsibility to make me happy by doing what I want you to do, right? And if that doesn't work, then we go to depth con two, which is anger and bullying, getting upset, 
why aren't you doing this? I can't believe you wouldn't want to do this. And rah, 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 rah. Even to the point, you know, sometimes it can even leave, uh, lead to like physical abuse. But it's like this anger and this uh, trying to force someone then to do what we want because they're scared of us instead. And if that doesn't work, then the third level, the last level that we do is what we all fear. The human side of us fears being rejected. So if the pouting and sad and upset doesn't work and the anger doesn't work, then we go into the rejection, the cold shoulder, you know, hanging up on someone, walking out of the room. Or if you're, you know, living together, the cold shoulder, the silent treatment. And that we're hoping that they'll chase after us. They'll come back after us and, and try to make it right because they're like, don't reject me. I'll do what you want or at least get something of what we want. Right. And then if that doesn't work, then we'll go back and start over from step one. You know, I can't believe that when I hung up on you, you didn't try to call me back. Or when I walked out of the room, you didn't come after me. And if that isn't, then we'll go to number two, the anger and then the, you know, rejection. So does all of that sound familiar at all, right? Though we've either done that to others and or have had it done to us. So when we realize the manipulation that's behind it all, when, especially when he pointed it out so clearly for me, it really set me free from doing that in, in the future. So he was the great teacher. I, it always reminds me of like Cher in that Moonstruck where she's like, slap, slap snap out of it so i did so i was with boyfriend number one for three years boyfriend number two for a year boyfriend number three for three years and then as i went into this relationship with number four <laughs> uh, he had just come out of a seven year relationship um, and I was just finishing up my little three relationships in seven years. And we were just like not wanting to jump into anything. We were just like, let's just hang out. We don't need to jump into another one. And it worked out really great because he was actually getting his master's in psychology to become a counselor. And so we had a lot of interesting and deep conversations about his relationships, my relationships. He actually got to... Uh, experienced me crying and sharing things and he felt bad because you know some of his actions were like echoes of pain that I felt and the others and I'm like you, you don't have to you're not responsible for this but he helped me talk through and uh, maybe I was his guinea pig too he probably did his thesis on me maybe I don't know <laughs> but I learned so much with that relationship because he knew like everybody in town it's like when you you know, you go to a restaurant and like five people come up or you're out walking and so he, they, we walk, you know, someone's walking this way and they know him and it's like, oh my gosh, he just knew so many people. I had uh, met so many different types of people that were in so many different types of relationships that one of the huge things that I learned was like, what is my definition, my restriction on what a relationship should be? Because they had all these different types, yet because they were, it was the agreement and the interaction between the two individuals, sometimes three individuals even, that it was, they were happy and they were doing very well in it, even though it didn't match up to all this that was in my head that I saw on TV and movies and how I was raised, like, oh my gosh, this is not right. You know, I learned through all of that, that those uh, approaches were, you know, great. And after about a year, we, you know, keeping my three-year, one-year, three-year, one-year pattern going on, I drifted, we drifted apart. And I realized more through all of that experience what I did want in a relationship and what I didn't. And that's why we kind of drifted apart. And it wasn't like, you know, um, ugly or, or anything. It was just like we just drifted apart and then we just stopped seeing each other. But it was like this huge, you know, awareness of, what I wanted to have in a relationship. And I actually ended up being single. I still kept my pattern of three year, one year, three year, one year, three year, because I was actually single for three years, which was huge. My monogamist, my serial monogamy 
was cured. It was broken. And I just hung out with people. I was able to hang out with people, not feel like I had to get into a relationship with individuals. I was just allowed to feel and be and enjoy people for who they were. So my great teacher taught me a lot. My last relationship was different from all the others in that there wasn't like this neediness, this desire to have them so close and, and smother them and uh, because I mistrusted them. I didn't have any of those insecurities anymore because I had learned that looking, reflecting on the other ones over that time that I their actions didn't mean anything about me, right? And they couldn't make me happy. I couldn't make them really happy. It was about our happiness inside of us. You know, my mom, uh, she carried a lot of the heartache inside of her um, from my dad, you know, not being faithful to her. And that's what we're taught to do, right? I mean, that's the, one of the huge uh, opinions, those popular opinions of the world is when someone doesn't remain faithful to you, that we're supposed to be devastated and hurt and carry that hurt for a very long time. My dad actually, you know, after my parents divorced, my dad um, got remarried two more times, and he's currently on uh, a beautiful relationship of uh, with a retired nurse as one of the most huge hearts um, in the world. My mom also had gotten remarried once, and but um, she had decided after that one ended that she's going to invest all her love and attention in the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. Um, so she and, and dedicated to her relationship with the creator as well and kind of just said not worth it for me um, to be in those other relationships and as I was preparing this and writing that down I'm like oh my gosh you know I think I'm a combination of both of them together because the point that I've gotten to in my life after after ending this fifth relationship which I'll talk about in a moment I have dedicated and not really um had an interest in seeking any other external relationships in a romantic sense because I found the love that I was looking for inside of me and with the creator and with spirit. And so I've kind of have been pursuing that as well. And I never say never. I mean, if the creator so feels that it is a great, uh, you know, experience for me and is needed for my highest experience here to be an additional relationship it'll happen it'll unfold but i'm not like actively pursuing it now number five he actually got to a point where he was um, going to be moving out of state to pursue his dreams and i almost forgot the promise to myself that i made with number two which i talked about earlier which was making the promise to myself that my dream is going to be equal or more important than the dreams of any partners that I would have. And in this case, moving out of state didn't fit in with what I wanted in my life. So, you know, he basically um, is what he moved away to pursue. And in the last, I only, and that relationship did last for a year. So yeah, it was one year, three year, one year, three year, one year, three year. <laughs> that pattern continued and I was just like, oh my gosh. And, but, you know, during the, the last months of that, the point of view that my little hurt self uh, was experiencing was like, he's trying to fit me in between the important things. And what a perfect mirror that was for me, though, because I was trying to fit myself in between what I thought were the important things out there and not living, you know, my dream, not focusing on myself. And as I put myself as a priority, a weird thing happened is I actually started to uh, really want and thirst after my alone time. I know, <gasps> what? <laughs> Being happy by yourself and alone? So I really did want that alone time and I learned to really enjoy it. And that is when the hermit was born. And it's amazing. I mean, I actually, it's been over a decade since I've gone on a date or had a relationship of any kind, and I haven't missed it at all. 
But it was, you know, one of the most life-changing experiences in our lives when we discover that we aren't responsible for other people's emotions and they're not responsible for ours. Sure, we can make it an easier or a harder choice for someone to choose unconditional love or fear and all that conditional love. But in the end, you know, it is ultimately our choice on what we choose, right? Because you can give someone the entire world and they could still choose to be unhappy, right? So even though like relationships, romantic relationships, uh, I haven't had those, we still continue to learn and grow through any of our relationships, whether it's family or friends or peers at work or at school, uh, even our pets, the cashier, someone almost running us over. I mean, we can run, but we can't hide. We will continue to have relationships. Divine appointments come into our lives, teaching us those things we want to see about ourselves, continually showing us and reflecting back to us the things that we want to see until we see them. In the next episode, I'm going to get bold and brave, and we're going to talk about sexuality's impact on our human and our spiritual experience here. In the meantime, if you are looking for more messages of love from above, in addition to these videos, I actually put out a variety of other videos throughout the month, like uh, monthly readings for each zodiac sign, weekly energy updates for each zodiac sign, and a few other types of videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those and be updated immediately when they become available, if you give this video a little thumbs up and click the like button, also click the subscribe button and that gives you access to the notification bell. And when you go in there, if you click on the all option, then you'll be notified of any new videos that come out on this channel. Also doing those things really helps spread the love and it helps my channel grow in significant ways. Because when you like a video or you share a video or you comment on a video and especially subscribing to the channel, doing those things makes the YouTube algorithm just light up and want to share the messages and the videos of this channel with other people as well. So if you feel inspired to do any of those things, I am very grateful. Also, any of the readings that I do are general readings. And if you are looking for specific information and answers for your specific life, I also offer personal readings. And all that information is listed in the description box below. All right, beautiful people, as you go throughout this next week, please know that every single second of every single day that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things. And of course, I love you too. Have an amazing week. We'll be talking soon. In the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.